This is BSS Sports. Fire to the end zone. It's caught. It's Greg Lewis. Touchdown. Brooks with one. Let's it fly at the horn. It's gone. Here's Kaiji with a burst of speed up the middle. Gets open. It's gone. A grand slam for Rayra. Pure genius from David Beckham. And it's in. Terry Henry with a bullet. Touchdown. With Thomas Brooks, Steve Shields, and Trevor Struthers. Only. On 91X. Hello, hello. It's another special edition of BSS Sports. My name is Stephen Schill with the every lovely, I don't know where I'm going with this because I always give you a different adjective every time we record and I can't pronounce certain words like episode. I should say episode. How, how would you say episode, Trevor? I say episode, but I, I enjoy your episodes. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. So we know who's going to play in the NBA Finals, the Golden State Warriors and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Another duo that are facing off in back-to-back years. A couple of things going back to the Thunder Warriors series, though, is after the game, it seemed that every Bleacher Report, etc., just started posting these photos about, you know, Russell Westbrook holding himself as if he's choking, and Stephen Curry, you know, writing on a piece of paper saying, you're going home, Russell, and all this kind of negative stuff. And most people wouldn't have thought the Thunder would have made it this far. But it just seems this big, huge social media, I want to call bullying. And I kind of relate it back to the Blue Jays' bat flip thing. I mean, it's not normally in the game, kind of, and what happens on the court and what other people do are two totally different things. But are these sporting sites taking things too far? I guess. I mean, to a certain extent, you expect it with like fans and stuff, and with athletes on Twitter, that kind of thing. But I mean, I mean, I don't know if it's going too far. I mean, you could look at it that way. Um, a, a place like Bleacher Report isn't exactly one of the most qualified sporting websites either when it comes to stuff. But uh, they're they're like mid ranked, anyways. Um, but call it what you will. Some people will call what the Thunder did a choke. Some people will call what the Warriors had was a comeback, which is, what, the 10th time, I think, in NBA history a team has come back from a 3-1 series deficit. Well, it's just kind of weird how sports in general are making this slight turn with the whole world being more sensitive about everything, and then it just seems that sports are not really caring about that, which which is fine. I mean, old school is new school, new school is old school. Don't really know, but just thought I should mention how kind of strange it was that certain media sources decided to take this in kind of a negative way instead of, you know, the way that the Raptors did when they won. The whole fan base and everybody was praising the Raptors. But moving on to the NBA Finals, I don't know if I'm really excited about it. I don't know what it is. It's kind of like, all right, we've seen these guys face off and his... Is there a cause for concern for lackluster caring, per se, about the finals? Because we've seen it before, or is it cool? Because it's round two between the two. We've seen these two two teams, I guess, before. Obviously, last year with Golden State and Cleveland. But one thing we didn't see last year was a healthy Cleveland team. Uh, I believe they lost Kyrie during that uh, that series last year. Uh, and Kevin Love didn't play at all in that series, and those are two guys there that are going to be huge for Cleveland uh, to have, at least to start the series. Who knows if they go down sometime during the series, but yeah, they're going to have them in the series. So Cleveland's looking pretty healthy, and um, I mean, LeBron himself gave the Cavs a chance last year without Kyrie and Kevin Love helping him, and so uh, now that the three of them are going going to be out there against Golden State, I give Cleveland more of a shot, and it, it could be a really exciting series. It's interesting to see as well, these two teams, they're not really bigs, per se. Neither team is bigs. Like, I mean, I guess you could go back to the last true big team with the Detroit Pistons when they tried to run run Josh Smith, uh, Greg Monroe, and Andre Drummond. And the same thing, we all know how horrible that went. But does it seem that the NBA is going kind of smaller and quick ball instead of kind of, you know, the more aggressive, bigger style Shaquille O'Neal type? You can see it, yeah, and I mean, I, I I find it comparable as well. The NHL is obviously doing very much the same thing, uh, where you see a lot of uh, smaller, you know, speed guys like uh, Mitch Marner coming up through the, through, uh, the Leaf system, and uh, will be in the NHL in the near future. But uh, I mean, yeah, so in NBA, in the NBA, it's the same kind of thing. You're not noticing so much uh, more physicality in the paint. Like you, you see, uh, you know, Clay Thompson and Steph Curry, the Splash Brothers. Uh, dropping threes and uh you saw it uh, with the Cavaliers and the Raptors just um 
the the Cavaliers are in a way the same sort of team. I mean, they'll drive to the paint, of course, but they're they're also you know they have Kevin Love to shoot threes. Kyrie Irving can do it. You know, even LeBron, although I feel like a lot of the time he's driving to the basket, he can shoot jumpers. And it's interesting to see that uh, both teams didn't really get to the finals and necessarily an easy route. You could say that the Golden State Warriors were supposed to kind of wash away the Oklahoma City Thunder. At least that was a bit of the talk. And then not many people expected the Raptors to hold their own against Cleveland. And, I mean, they only did it for two games. And when they didn't, when they were in Cleveland, it was it was not pleasant at all. But would you give the uh, advantage to the Cavaliers or the Warriors? I think you give it to the Warriors. I, I feel like, uh, and you'll probably hear this from everybody else, that I feel the Warriors are more battle-tested this year in the playoffs. Uh, Cleveland obviously cruised through the first two rounds. Toronto gave them a bit of a test. But ultimately, um, yeah, like you said, when Cleveland won the games, they won them by like 30 points, 40 points even. Obviously, the Warriors are more bat- battle-tested, uh, com- especially coming off the series with uh, the Thunder, and they had uh, to face the advers- adversity of uh, a few elimination games in a row. Right now, they're on a, on a tear, and Cleveland, you could say, is also on a tear. Definitely, I feel uh, the advantage should go to Golden State, who uh, have had the tougher of opponents recently. It was kind of weird. I don't really know if it's a possibility or the ruling on this, but I seen a posting about uh, Mr. Verizal, the former Cavalier and now a warrior. And somebody talked, and they said, could he technically win a ring no matter what? And I'm pretty positive you don't win a ring unless you are on that roster in the playoffs. I don't know how it works in the NBA. I do know, uh, definitely in baseball, if you're on the roster, of, of the winning team's roster at some point during the season... Uh, or playoffs, you know, if you're on that roster at any point in time, even if you don't get into a game, if you're on the roster, you get a ring. That's so weird. Why do you think that is? I think they're, it's just them being really generous, I guess. I mean, I don't really know any other explanation for it. I wonder if there's ever been a situation where players declined it because he felt like he wasn't a part of it. Yeah, I would probably do that, well, unless you're trying to go for bragging rights. But uh, it's kind of odd, though. Verjao leaves the Cavaliers, which is the best team in the East. Then he goes to the best team in the West. You know, often that doesn't happen. And then, and then, if we're on the trail of really weird things, if you look over in the NHL over there, who's in the playoffs? The San Jose Sharks. Who's in the NBA playoffs? The Golden State Warriors. Both are from the San Francisco area. What what's going on? Like normally, this is some kind of Boston or New York thing that's going on right now. What is up with San Francisco 49ers? They have some work to do. They're not going to get there for a little bit. But isn't isn't it kind of cool that they're both in the finals? I think California just had it lucky. I mean, the LA Kings in the NHL, uh, the San Francisco Giants in baseball. Uh, San, I mean, California just always seems to produce pretty uh, <laughs> pretty um, competitive teams i mean who wouldn't want to play in california and i think that has a lot to do with uh, a lot of the the intrigue to uh, be a part of a a franchise in california and shout out to thomas brooks who's down in california for whatever reason right now uh (laughs) finally trevor who do you think is going to come out on top on these nba finals i almost want to flip a coin on this one um i do obviously give uh cleveland a better chance because they're more healthy this time around but with that being said, Golden State is on a roll right now. I mean, they were up against it there against the Thunder, and uh, they were able to obviously um, come back. And the, the game six, they could have, you know, given up pretty much, uh, as you would say. But they came back and they ended up winning that game. So I mean, I'm going to take Golden State, but I think this will be a long series, at least six games. At least that's what I hope as well. I don't think it'll be a, a real short one. I feel that the Golden State Warrior also has an advantage with their fans. Because, I mean, if you look at Toronto, there really wasn't many Cavalier fans there. But if you watch some Warrior games, there's always somebody that makes it out. If we remember the Heat a while ago, there was that random guy wearing the Golden State jersey before Golden State was even in the finals a few years ago when LeBron was with the Heat. And there was a little bit of foreshadowing for you right there. But I just feel in general the Golden State is going to have the bigger home court advantage, and I think their fans are going to come out because they're some of the best in the league. That's it for this episode of BSS Sports, or special edition 
episode of BSS Sports on 91X in the Quinty area every Monday at 2.30. And we're going to do these little bit of YouTube uh, interludes every once in a while as well. So make sure to keep an eye on that. For Stephen Schill and Trevor Struthers, we will catch you on Monday.